today, I have a message for you, and it is called the dialectic father and mother. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to grant us wisdom and knowledge concerning the subject that we're going to be looking at in the Lord Jesus Christ's name through the power of the Holy Ghost. Heal us mentally, physically, and spiritually. Empower us with the Holy Ghost. Let this message penetrate our hearts and minds in a prophetic way. We ask in the name of Yeshua Messiah, the Lord, uh, Yeshua Messiah, Atonine, the power of the Holy Ghost. If you will, turn over to Ephesians chapter 6. And let us look at verse 1, and this is out of the English Standard. Chet, six, four, and one children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. If six to two honor your father and mother, this is the first commandment with a promise. F6, 3, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. F6, colon, forefathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Ihr Kinder, seid gehorsam euren Eltern in dem Herrn, denn das ist billig. F6 Doppelpunkt 2 Ehre deinen Vater und deine Mutter, das ist das erste Gebot mit Verheißung. F6 Doppelpunkt 3 Auf das ist ihr Vulgier und du lange lebest auf Erden. F6 Doppelpunkt 4 Und ihr Väter, reizet eure Kinder nicht zum Zorn, sondern zieht sie auf in der Zucht und der Mahnung des Herrn. F6 Colon 1 Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. F6 colon to honor your father and mother, this is the first commandment with the promise. F6 colon 3, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. F6 colon forefathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So what does these verses, verses tell us? Verses 1 through 3. Children have responsibilities for carrying out part of Christ's plan to bring unity to the human race. This time, unity between generations for Paul, part of what characterized the descendants of the sixth day creation culture as standing under God's judgment is that it is marked by children's disobedience to their parents. <clears throat> Romans 1 30, 2 Timothy 3 2. Unsaved. The first commandment with a promise. The law of God has lost its power to con condemn those who are in Christ. Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14. And the observation of the ceremonial law is inappropriate. 
following their fulfillment in Christ. However, the weightier matters of the law, Matthew 23, 23, are revelations of God's character and establish permanent ethical principles. One of these is that children must honor their parents. The moral and civil law, or the which is referring to the moral law, the civil law is still in effect, but the ceremonial law is not. For conversely, to parents, Paul stresses the responsibility of those in authority. Bring them up. The Greek suggests the idea of nurturing and helping to f flourish. Parents are entrusted with the minds, feelings, and bodies of tender bearers of the divine image. Accordingly, children do not exist for parents, but parents for children to help them come into their own personhood before God discipline the shaping of the will through training instruction the shaping of the minds through teaching um, children are the symbol of the Sea line of Christ. Hey, I'm not a nerd. You cried about a math test. Hey, you suck at soccer. Oh, come on. Guys, 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 guys. Look, Henry, this was all my fault, okay? I just wanted to find something that we could do together, and now I know. And children are called to obey their parents. And obeying and children obeying their parents is in the direction of the acquittal holiness that we receive through Christ Jesus. And children are called to respect their parents because it is one of the commandments of God's moral law and if children obey their parents and honor their parents. They will live the life of acquittal that Christ has provided for us through his sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. And parents are to be example of moral integrity, balanced and fair. And to discipline and instruct. <coughs> our kids in the direction of Atul Nine discipline 
the sharpening of the will through training, the sharpening of the mind through teaching. Children are given to us by God to raise them up to fulfill God's purpose and plan of the Great Commission. Not only are we called to discipline and bring them instruction, but we are to raise them to be a next generation of God's evangelists, preachers and teachers to fulfill the Great Commission to bring about the completion of the Christianization of the whole entire world, ushering a golden age of peace and prosperity. Without that discipline and the Lord in our children's lives, Kids become like the unsaved. Kids become examples of the unsaved that disobey their parents. And there is more than ever in this hour that we need to reverse a generation of children being raised up on the Gentile ethics of the six day creation and the unsaved in the house of Israel. And so we got to reverse that trend, change that trend. Or we're going to see recession rather than progression in a civil, moral, ethical, and spiritual system, civil system of society in all aspects and we are called to nourish nourish them inspire them infuse them with passion course training and shaping the mind through teaching and when I say that I mean God just doesn't want you to be a parent but he wants you to be dialectic Parents, dialectic parents, extraordinary parents, parents of integrity, character, morals, and ethics, 
that takes serious the Word of God and takes serious prayer and takes serious raising their kids up on the instruction and discipline of God Almighty. Now, when I say extraordinary dialectic parents, I mean you can also be, God is calling you to be, is to be a cool, hip, sophisticated parent, but at the same time can bring about reverence from their kids to them. You can be hip, you can be cool, you can be your kids' friends, but you can but you also have to be able to bring about reverence out of your kids when it's time for reverence to come out of your children, when it's time to be your kids' friend, to be cool and hip. It's time to do that, but when it's time to bring about the discipline, that is when it's time for you to bring about reverence out of your kids. And through the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God will bring the reverence out of your kids when it's time to bring about reverence and when it's time to bring out passion when it's time to bring out God will bring it out and when it's time to be your kid's friend he will bring it out but you cannot have too much mercy and you cannot have too much grace because the key here what is being communicated to us in the scripture is to bring a bot to raise your kids up with grace and truth grace and truth the balance and my brothers and sisters you need to go before God and ask him to bring about balance grace and truth in raising your kids up grace and truth nurturing when it's necessary and a firm hand when it's necessary and my friends you need to pray for discernment about your different kids discernment to be able to see which which gifts that God has put in your kids and learn to nourish those gifts those passions but then to strike a balance back in and have discipline and instructions and I don't know about you but I'm a strong believer in teaching our kids to respect the arts education poetry books games, fun,
and raising up our kids to be little evangelists, little uh, little deacons, little bishops, and evangelists. Turn to uh, Proverbs. Chapter 12, verse 1, and this is out of the English Standard Version, and it reads, Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but, uh, but a man of evil devices he condemns. So... Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Literally, loving discipline, loving knowledge. The form of this proverb, like 13.3 and 14.2, groups things that belong together without specifically stating the relationship. These are them contrast with their opposites. The wise person accepts correction and subsequently grows wiser, but the one who cannot accept criticism goes nowhere. That Proverbs verse 1 uh, is A symbol and reality that we must instill in our children but in order for us to instill that in our children we need to go before God to instill us his children in our actions, behaviors, mannerisms, and so forth. Uh, God wants us to raise children of no noble character and integrity. And Aristocter aristocracy characters and integrity in both male and female aristocratic characters and integrity in our children so that they may have been firmly and fully established in the ways, the directions, principles, and purpose is of God for their lives. God wants to create dialectic parents. And by creating dialectic parents in us, we raise dialectic parents for the future, dialectic preachers, teachers, evangelists, etc. Dialectic parents simply means prophetic, apostolic, spirit-filled parents which raise up prophetic, apostolic parents of tomorrow that is what we need in this era of, era of recession 
That is what we need. That is what God needs in you. That is what God needs in your children, in your grandparents, and so forth. That is what God needs. And God needs you to step up to the plate, rise to the challenge, to be that dialectic preacher, that dialectic evangelist, and dialectic parent. And this can only be established through commitment to God's word, His truth, living godly and holy lives, studying, praying, reading the word of God, spending time with our children, and bringing a parent system of grace and truth so that you may raise children uh, children to be parents of tomorrow of grace and truth God needs people who will pray for wisdom and knowledge on how to do such a thing to produce in our children because God's children is the crown uh, crown of creation and we are included in that seed and then wisdom and knowledge comes then you need to put into practice those truths you need to learn and one of the ways to make yourself a dialectic parents is that you need to go to YouTube and type in my name and start going through sermons after sermons through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel and receive the tools to be that dialectic parent father, mother, and then producing it in our children as we raise them now with me I can be a pretty cool dude but when it's time I can bring forth the reverence necessary because through the Holy Ghost God empowers me to have that balance and not always but sometimes and the same thing can happen to you and your children because It is God's will and providence. Ephesians 6, 1-4 The great duty of children is to obey their parents. That obedience includes inward reverence as well as outward acts and in every age prosperity has attended those distinguished for obedience to parents. The duty of parents. Be not impatient, use no unreasonable severities. Deal prudently and wisely with children, convince their judgments and work upon their reason. Bring them up well, under proper and compassionate correction, and in the knowledge of the duty God requires. Often is this duty neglected, even among professors of the gospel. 
Many set their children against religion, but this does not excuse the children's disobedience, though it may be awfully occasion it. God alone can change the heart, yet he gives his blessing to the good lessons and examples of parents, and answers their prayers. But those, whose chief anxiety is that their children should be rich and accomplished, whatever becomes of their souls, must not look for the blessing of God. Epheser 6, 1, 4 Die große Aufgabe der Kinder ist, um ihren Eltern zu gehorchen. Das Gehorsam umfasst nach innen Ehrfurcht, aber auch nach außen wird, und zu jeder Zeit des Wohlstands hat die für Gehorsam gegenüber den Eltern unterscheiden besucht. Die Pflicht der Eltern. Seien Sie nicht ungeduldig, verwenden keine unzumutbare Herren. Der All umsichtig und klug mit Kindern, davon zu überzeugen, ihre Urteile und Arbeiten auf ihren Grund. Bringt sie sich gut, unter den richtigen und mitfühlen Korrektur, und in der Erkenntnis der Pflicht Gott verlangt. Oft ist dies Pflicht vernachlässigt, auch unter den Professorinnen und Professoren des Evangeliums. Viele setzen ihre Kinder gegen die Religion, aber das bedeutet nicht, die Kinder ungehorsam zu entschuldigen, sie auf sein Markt furchtbar anders ist. Gott allein kann das Herz zu ändern, aber er gibt seinen Segen zu den guten Unterricht und Beispiele von Eltern und beantwortet ihre Gebete. Aber diejenigen, deren Hauptsorge ist, dass ihre Kinder die Reichen und erreicht seien, was auch immer wird ihrer Seele, muss nicht nach dem Segen Gottes. Epistle to the Ephesians 6, 1 4 to succeed every indirect text of children 1. To a death there is. That submission admitting bound fear. Atomic number 33. Rise up element at the bound book. And Indiana all modify economic condition angular distance accompanied those grand for filial duties and urge. The social control of bring up. Occupy not wearing. Take atomic number 102 in ordinate severities. Look at prudently and wisely with children. Persuade their legal document and put to work upon their present. Add them increase rise. Never write and sympathize with reproof. And in the analysis of the social control divinity take. Often single this obligation unattended. Alter among prof of the evangel. Many are coined their children against organized religion. But this executive department not led off the children's rebelliousness. Though applied science practically they got to rest off. They make information technology. Image unequal. Preserve deep in the affection. Yet element turn over howdy prayer to the artifact object. Lesson and internal representation of rear. And figure out their sacred writing. But those whose head anxiousness chemical element that their children should constitute rich people and realized whatsoever transform of their somebody. Moldina's not search for the support of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to hide these words in our hearts and minds and empower us to put into practice these truths in Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.